What is going on everyone? Welcome back to Wildcat Cave. College basketball hasn't even crowned its champion yet and the transfer portal is already full of names. And even though Kentucky isn't loaded with one and done freshmen this season, you can still bet that there'll be plenty of turnover for Calipari and company and it's already started. Okay guys, if you couldn't have already guessed, today we're going to be going through the roster and I'll give you guys my opinion on who stays and who goes for Kentucky this offseason. But before we do that, here are the top five guys in the Wildcat Cave Bracket Challenge heading into Final Four weekend. Coming on at number five, you have Sack Woo Bracket number two. Uh, number four is 85 Brett, 85 number three. At number three, you have the Connor Biddle. At number two, you have Sack Woo Bracket number three. And currently in first place with only a few games left, uh, you have Sack Woo bracket number one. Make sure you subscribe right now so you don't miss out on future events like this and follow along for more UK news and discussion. And now let's get into who stays and who goes for the Cats. Number one, um, we'll start with Jacob Toppin. I think this one's pretty easy. Um, I'm pretty sure that he doesn't have any eligibility left. Um, and for that reason, I think he's obviously gone. We obviously appreciate what Jacob has done for this program over the past three years. Um, he looks like he may have played himself into maybe not getting drafted, but finding himself on an uh, NBA roster. So good luck to Jacob going forward. And again, we appreciate everything he's done, um, but I don't uh, foresee him being on the team next season. <laughs> Up next, we have CJ Frederick. Now this one's close. I think there is a good chance he returns. Um, I think a lot of people around him and uh, have kind of expressed that he's not exactly thrilled with how his college career has gone uh, this far. Obviously, he played at Iowa for a little bit, got injured there, came to Kentucky hoping to contribute to a big-time program, um, and now you know sat out last year um, and then was hurt some this year. So I don't think he's quite happy with how his career has went. He spent most of it on the sidelines injured. Um I think there might be a small chance he transfers, probably not likely, but it is possible. Um, and overall, he, he's engaged now. He's one of the older guys on the team. He's engaged, and he may be ready just to hang it up. Um, I do think this one is really close. I don't think this is a cut-and-dry decision for CJ. At the end of the day, I think he's ready to not be injured, start his life with Blair, and uh, I think he hangs it up. I don't see uh, CJ coming back. I do think it's close, probably 60-40. Um, I just don't think CJ. <laughs> Up next, we have Severe Wheeler. Um, it's already came out. He's in the transfer portal. I think this has been a long time coming. Uh, I think this has been a done deal for months at this point. Um, it's came out through KSR Matt Jones that they have already had a school picked out for possibly weeks, maybe since the beginning of February. He had already had that school picked out. Um, I think once he got injured um, and everybody kind of saw how much better we were with Kaysen, I think from that point on, it was pretty clear to people around the program um, that he was just not going to play for Kentucky again. Um, I think the injury had something to do with it. I don't think the injury was everything, though. Um, apparently, Kansas State is looking at him pretty heavily. Um, if that ends up being the school, um, that is what we I had heard a long time ago. That's Matt Jones has came out and said that that's what he heard a long time ago. Um, so if that is the case, then I think it says a lot because we know that it's not just injury at that point. If he had done picked out Kansas State a month and a half ago before you know the season was over and before the, he uh, officially entered the transfer portal, I think it says that maybe injury was not the only thing keeping him out of this game. He had already made up his mind, picked where he wanted to go play next. And I don't want to say he quit on the team because I think he was still around and stuff. Um, but there was just a lot of disconnect with him. Um, he had that surgery that had to be on senior night. I don't know how much I believe of that. He couldn't have the tailbone surgery the next day and came out to a round of applause for his senior night. I think there's just a lot of mysterious circumstances. I think there were some locker room issues once he got hurt um, that, you know, the team kind of saw that they were better with Case and he wasn't happy being demoted to a bench and a role player. Um, so I think there's just some issues within the team uh, concerning him, a lot of mysterious circumstances around him and 
whatever's going on behind the scenes. Um, they came out this week and said that at that players only meeting we talked about back in January, um, the whole team was there except for severe. Now, could he have had class? Sure. Could he have been visiting family? Sure. But it is weird that he was the only player not there. And now all these rumors and, you know, things are coming out about him not being with the team, not being fully connected and maybe having some, some issues with his role after his injury. So ultimately I think it's clear he's already in the portal. Severe is gone. Next, we have the arrow. Um, I don't think he leaves. I think he's a pretty solid person to be back for Kentucky, um, but he can contribute in small amounts next year. I think I didn't love how much he played this year, for being honest. Um, but with next year's class coming in, you have DJ and Reed and Dillingham and all of these other guards. I think it's going to be hard for him to find playing time on a team that talented next season. Um, I look for him to be impactful in his third year. Um, I think if he comes back next year, gets better, plays here and there, and then in his junior year, I think he can be really, really big and contribute quite a bit. I do think he comes back. I just don't look for him to play a ton. Next is Damian Collins. Um, I think his decision is mostly not related to basketball. Um, obviously, his father passed away at the beginning of the basketball season. He's originally from Texas. Um, his dad actually moved to Lexington to just be with him. After his dad passed away, um, obviously, that is hard on any kid. So I expect him to not be back to Kentucky. If it was strictly a basketball decision, I think he would be. I just don't think it is. Um, I think, you know, he wants to be closer to his family. How could you not after a situation like that? I would look for a team in Texas to pick him up, uh, maybe Texas themselves, uh, Baylor, Texas Tech, SMU, a team around that area, maybe even like an LSU Mississippi State because he kind of grew up right on that border. Um, but I, I don't think Damian Collins comes back. I think he transfers and continues his college career elsewhere. Next is Antonio Reeves. Antonio's in a, in a weird position. He can make a lot of money coming back to UK. I don't know how much his game transfers to the NBA just yet, um, but I do think he tests the NBA water. From everything I'm hearing, early feedback from the NBA is not great. Um, I, I think the scouts and the talent acquisition people in the NBA – aren't quite sold that he's a first or second round pick. Uh, he's made, you know, over $100,000 at Kentucky and NIL this past season. So I think he's likely back. I think NIL is a big opportunity. If he made a hundred, 150,000 last year, coming back, being a key player on next year's team, I think he ends up making a lot more than that. Um, I think he could get upwards of a quarter million dollars. So if you're him, I think it makes sense for him to come back. Um, for obviously NIL opportunity, a chance to improve his draft stock. And I think when he came here, the plan was always for him to be here for two years. I think that was kind of an agreement him and Cal had when they came in. And he fits perfectly on next year's team. Next year's team is full of really, really talented guards. Um, but they do what Antonio Reeves cannot do, which is penetrate and beat their man off the dribble. And DJ and Rob and Reed aren't the best three-point shooters in the world. So Reeves fits perfectly, allowing them to have a scoring threat um, while those guards can also penetrate. So I look for Reeves to come back and play a key role next season. Next is Kaysen Wallace. There's not a lot I can say about Kaysen. Dude's a lottery pick. Um, so, you know, he had a great season here. We shake his hand. We say thank you. And everybody moves on. Uh, good luck to Kaysen in the NBA. He's not back at Kentucky. <laughs> Up next, that brings us to Ugana Onyenso. Um, This seemed, right after the season, a very straightforward decision. Um, he kind of came out and said he's excited to be back and you know looks forward to developing and stepping into his role next season. Um, but I think some of that's changed. Um, I don't think his handlers are loving his role or his playing time right now. And I don't... Jack Pilgrim came out this week and said... If it was up to Ugo, he would be back on this team, no questions asked. But apparently, Ugana doesn't even know where Ugana's going to play next year. Um, it's not his decision. Um, I think we heard some rumors about stuff like this with Oscar when he came over from the Congo. Um, but apparently, these guys that get them over here have a lot more pull than the average fan knows about. Um, and they honestly kind of control where these players go. They have a They have full reign over these guys' future, which is really sad. Um, 
but it, it's just it is what it is. It, it's been this way for years, and I don't expect that to change. I do think it's likely he comes back. Um, like I said, his in his mind, Kentucky's where he wants to be. He wants to be here, um, but apparently the handlers and the people that truly make the decisions for him are not exactly thrilled with his role and his position right now. So I would give it probably a 65 to 70% chance he's back, um, but I would not take it for granted. And uh, much like a do, I think this is a guy that can contribute a little next year and then a lot the following year. So I hope he's back, and I do think he ultimately ends up back at Kentucky. Up next, we have Oscar. Um, I would love to have Oscar back. National Player of the Year, two-time uh, All-American. Great player for the Kentucky, obviously. Probably one of the maybe second best in Cal era. Um, but I think there was a lot of disconnect early with him and Cal this year. Um, and then even somewhat him with the team. Um, there's some rumors that they didn't, you know, not that anybody didn't like Oscar. It's just he he's different and he didn't connect and he didn't live in the lodge. Um, and I think there was a mutual agreement between him and the team and Cal that it's kind of time for him to go. And honestly, it is. I would, Again, I think I would love to have Oscar back next year. Um, but I think it is time for him to move on. Um I think he's not even a great fit on next year's team, which is crazy for a player of the year to to not be a great fit on a team. Um, but with these guards we have coming in that like to penetrate and get to the rim, Oscar standing in the paint and not being able to spread the floor just is going to get in their way. Um, so I don't think there's any bad blood there. Um, obviously, every bit everybody in Big Blue Nation should be grateful to Oscar Sheboy for what he's done the past two years. Um, but ultimately, I think he he takes his talents and he goes pro. Um, to whatever extent that he can. Where? Um, I think Lance is back. I think it's pretty obvious. Um, he played with DJ and Aaron Bradshaw in high school up in Camden. Um, I think he is a guy that accepts his role on this team. I think Lance knows he's not going to be a starter. Um, he's not going to be that 35-minute-a-game guy that goes out and puts up 15 and 10. Um, but he accepts his role. He's the bully. He's the... He's the physical, you know, getting your face type of guy for Kentucky. Uh, something they haven't had a lot of recently. Now with DJ and Rob and these guys coming in, maybe that changes. Maybe he's not the only dog, um, which is exactly what Kentucky fans hope for. Um, but if he does accept his role, uh, I think he could be really important as long as his game continues to develop. If he can give Kentucky like six and six next season, which isn't a crazy stat line, I think that's a huge improvement for him, and I think that really helps this team again doing all the dirty work that we haven't had a lot of guys do recently. He can be that guy that goes up a guy like Euros from Tennessee um, and, and, you know, bodies with him down low, grabs boards, does all the diving on the floor and stuff that Cal likes. But the re the main reason I don't think he leaves is because I don't think there's a huge market for him. Um, I don't think that there's going to be teams beating down the door, at least not big-name teams. If you got – I mean, he would play well at mid-majors – um, but I don't think there's other Kentuckys and Kansases and Dukes, uh, you know, knocking on Kentucky's door asking about Lance Ware. Um, again, I think he can contribute. I think if his game takes a little step forward, he can be a really big contributor. I just don't think he goes anywhere, and I think he's back on this team next year. And finally, we have Chris Livingston. This one's tough. Um, none of the early news coming out about him is good news. Um, apparently, his people are unhappy with how he was used here. Um, I think Cal actually wanted to put him in the four, which is something Big Blue Nation preached all season. I mean, we heard early rumors of this, but apparently him, his team, his people, um, only wanted him to play the three, maybe even some two. For some reason, they believe that in the NBA, he is a three or possibly even a two, which is just insane to me. Um, apparently Cal had him watching Devin Booker film, which he'll never play the two in the NBA. So I don't understand, but apparently clutch has a big influence on this. If you don't know what clutch is, it's his management agency. Um, it's the one LeBron and rich Paul own. Um, and apparently, you know, he's one of their clients. So I think clutch has a huge influence on this. I think there's a chance for a possible return. I think Chris might want to return, but I also think that in Chris's mind, he uh he believes he's an NBA pick, and you see this a lot with some of these high-rated freshmen. Even if they don't 
play well in college and they're really not a good NBA pick this year, they have it in their minds and the people around them hype them up so much that they just can't see the they can't see the forest through the trees, if you will. Um, and I think he would be such an ideal fit on this team next year. Um, they need a guy to play the four like him. He's gotten so much better towards the end of the season. If he comes back next year, he takes a huge jump. There's a huge NIL opportunity. And honestly, if he wasn't affiliated with Clutch, he might be a second rounder, maybe. Um, I, like I said, I just think there's so many disappointing influences around him. People that are just yes men telling him what he wants to hear. And, you know, they hype him up too much. And they've got even him believing that he can go pro right now and light the world on fire. Again, he might be a second rounder without Clutch. Uh, but LeBron is the biggest name in the NBA and has a ton of pull. Um, so they might be able to convince a team to take him in the first round, guarantee him a little bit of money. Um, and ultimately, I think Chris leaves. It's even came out this week um, that some NBA, that all NBA scouts believe he's gone. There's not an NBA scout out there that believes he's coming back to college. And the ones that think it's a possibility don't think it's at Kentucky. So even if he does return to the college game, I doubt he comes back to Kentucky. Um, but in all likelihood, Chris hits the NBA draft. That is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments who you think returns, who do you want to see return, who leaves, and your thoughts on the transfer portal. Let me know all of that. Uh, we can talk about it in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos. And I'll see you guys next week. Go Cats!